Hey hey, what is up guys, it is Orbean Hardware and in today's video we're gonna build the best gaming PC under $700 and I specifically show part you can actually buy, hopefully at least by the time you're watching this, but yeah the stock for PC components is crazy, I know. Anyway in this video we're gonna go through the whole building process of this PC from start to finish and then we're going to start up the computer and test the gaming performance in some of the most popular games. Anyway in case you decide to build this PC, all items are linked up down below so spending about 650 dollars will give you a pc that is capable of running most games at 1080p high settings with smooth frame rate and just a quick sneak peek at the performance shows that we're able to run all games tested with great results but yeah we're gonna dive into the gaming performance in much greater detail in just a second so inside this pc we find an amd ryzen 3 3100 and this is a high clocked 4 core processor that is based off of amd's insanely popular Zen 2 architecture we're gonna pair the cpu with 16 gigabyte from corsair a 500 gigabyte m.2 from kingston as well as a gtx 1660 graphics card from nvidia everything contained inside is awesome some looking case from deep cool anyway timestamps can be found down below now before we get started be sure to drop a comment let me know what you thought about this video drop a like if you enjoy the content and make sure to subscribe to never miss an episode so as always i like to kick the video off with the cpu ram and motherboard and for today's build yeah the ds3h coming in at 63 dollars uh, once again makes the base for today's build now the reason i keep using this board over and over again for my pc builds is simple this is a extremely reliable motherboard and it's price to performance is very hard to beat right now and if you want to build a cheap gaming system in 2021 you want to spend most of your budget on graphics followed by cpu followed by ram and so by only spending about 70 dollars or so uh, on the motherboard we will have more money to spend on gpu and cpu which ultimately will result in a faster gaming machine with less stutter and smoother gameplay so let's take a look at the processor coming in at $99. This is the Ryzen 3 3100 and this one comes with 4 cores and 8 threads with the base clock at 3.6 and 3.9 GHz turbo. Now a quick peek at the CPU gaming performance, we see that the 3100 does a great job versus the competition. And this is much thanks to the Zen 2 architecture which offers low latency and high IPC. Now although it's not fast enough to match some of the more expensive picks as we can see here, this is still a fantastic CPU in a cheaper system with a less expensive graphics card. And as we can see a motherboard comes with a retention frame, but since we're using a cooler with springs rather than a retention clips, we have to remove the retention frame from the motherboard. Now installing the processor is actually quite simple you want to locate the golden triangle on the processor and this triangle lines up with the triangle on our motherboard socket and you simply want to turn the cpu so that the corresponding triangles match up then open the metal arm drop the processor into the socket and put the metal arm down and our cpu is now installed Inside the CPU box also comes a heatsink which is actually good enough for stock settings and the cooler installment is also pretty simple and if this is the first time installing the CPU cooler it should have some thermal grease pre-applied and in that case you don't need to apply some thermal grease on the CPU lid. Position the CPU coolers that the four spring screws on the heatsink align with the four uh, screw holes on the backplate. Once aligned carefully place the heatsink onto the CPU. Using a screwdriver, turn the spring screw half a turn clockwise to ensure the spring screw makes a connection with the back plate. Follow a diagonal pattern across the CPU cooler, further tightening each spring screw with a full turn. And with all four spring screws uh, connected to the back plate, tighten them up until you feel resistance. Then check the CPU cooler to ensure that it's uh, properly secured to the motherboard. Lastly, we connect the fan power cable to the CPU cooler to the fan, a CPU fan header on the motherboard. 
Now moving on to memory and yeah, as you may have guessed, we're gonna go all in on RGB today. This is 16 gigabyte and it comes from Corsair's insanely popular Vengeance Pro RGB lineup. And because not all people out there like RGB, I'm also going to link up a similar non-RGB kit down below. Uh, in the video description as well the speed for the memory kit is rated at 3200 megahertz and that will give you a bit of a frame rate boost versus using a slower clock kit as the way that the cpu operates having faster clock ram can gain a bit of performance in your favorite game now our motherboard supports something called dual channel and in order for that to work we're going to populate the gray slots so simply pull back the toggle for the second and the fourth dim slot and simply plug in the ram sticks just like so So let's install our M.2 drive and for today's build I went with the A2000 from Kingston. This drive offers fantastic price to performance and this is a great budget pick for anyone building a cheap gaming system in 2021. Installing the M.2 drive is quite simple. We want to locate the M.2 slot and we find this right underneath the CPU cooler. And what you want to do is you want to loosen this tiny screw just like so. Then gently slide the M.2 unit until the socket with the little notch uh, you see here. You want this on the opposite side of the CPU cooler just like so. And finally we take the screw and we hold down the M.2 unit just like this as we screw it down till it stops. Our motherboard assembly is now done and complete and we can now go ahead and move it into our chassis. And in today's build I ended up picking the Deepcool Matrix 50 coming in at $72. This great looking case comes with two side tempo glass side panels and up to four 120mm RGB fans to keep our system cool and quiet. For IO we find three USB ports, a power button as well as a dedicated button that takes care of all the RGB and the fans and everything is already nicely pre-installed which is very nice to see. There is room to fit a 240 radiator at the top and a 361 at the front. So first thing we have to do is we have to prep the case and first we take the four thumb screws holding the temper glass in place. Next thing we gonna install our IO shield and that we find in our motherboard box and this one goes in from the back of the case with the circular audio ports located at the bottom. And with the CPU cooler installed we can just grab onto the CPU fan and slide the motherboard into place and I prefer having the case laying down as I'm installing and securing the motherboard. And we're gonna use the screws that come provided from deep cool and with the motherboard secured before we move to power supply, graphics card and storage installment. Now is a good time to connect the chassis cables that takes care of the front audio and USB as well as the power button. So let's start with USB 3. This is a wide connector. It's uh, fairly thick as you can see and it's almost impossible to miss. Simply route it through one of the various routing holes and plug it in just like so. The connector is located at the bottom of the motherboard. Next in line we have this USB connector and this one goes to a connector that is located right next to the USB 3 connector. Moving on to front audio and this cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly we have the front panel connectors and you find this on the lower right side. Now this can be a bit tricky and if you stumble into any trouble here just have a look at the manual from the motherboard and don't sweat it guys just take your time with this. So let's go ahead and install our power supply and I chose this 550 watt unit from Corsair. Now this is a compact and silent and high quality PSU with 80 plus bronze efficiency with the yeah, black sleeve cables coming in at just $58. Now make sure you got the fan facing downwards then gently slide it into place and secure it. We're gonna do a couple of cables and wiring before installing our graphics. First up we got the 24 pin power for our, our motherboard and this one goes to a connector on the mid right side. Next up we have the 8 pin power uh, ESP for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. 
Alright, so time to install our graphics card and for today's build we find a GTX 1660, this one specifically from Asus from their popular dual series lineup. Now this 1660 comes with 6GB of RAM which is perfectly good enough for 1080p and even some 1440p gaming. This GPU should also be a lot easier to find at MSRP, but I know guys this isn't the best time to build a PC right now. Anyway, I've gone ahead and linked up some great options down below. Plug in the graphics card just like so and take this uh, dual PCIe cable and plug it into our graphics card just like so. What is left to do is to flip the case around, whack on this side panel and we have, yeah, officially completed our $650 gaming PC build and if you did everything right, your system should power on. So with that done and clear, let's fire up some games and find out how it performs. On your screen now guys, you see the performance numbers I've gathered from today's build and I ended up running, I think, 14 games in total and overall, I am actually more than happy with today's build, but let's dive a bit deeper with some of the games tested and first, let's have a look at Death Stranding running at 1080p high settings. Now as we can see, this beautiful looking game runs fantastic on today's build with an average of 93 FPS with 1% low at 79 and so very high numbers and uh, yeah, if you got a monitor that supports 1440p, I would definitely recommend that and you should be able to reach 60 FPS here with no problem. Moving on to CSGO and here I went for a more competitive frame rate where I left pretty much everything at low at 1080p and this results in well over 200 FPS in a random deathmatch. Doom Eternal is next and once again I'm picking high settings and 1080p and this machine has no problem reaching 60 FPS here once again so 1440p if you have a monitor that supports it obviously is definitely possible. Overwatch is next up running at 1080p high settings results in a very smooth gameplay and over 100 FPS at 1% low. Even Horizon Zero Dawn runs great again at 1080p high settings. Again guys, all PC components we just went over can be found down below. Now I am starting up a discord server and on this server we're going to discuss PC builds and issues and everything in between and so I'm obviously going to hang out there and so if you want to get in contact with me this is definitely the best place to do it. The link to the discord server can be found down below. Now watch either of these two videos. I want to thank you so much for watching this video and until next time have an awesome day.